Hello there, and welcome back to The Neighborhood. We're looking at a small speaker amplifier today that packs a big punch, despite its small size and price. Let's get into it. The Fosse Audio TB10D is an ultra-compact two-channel amplifier in a black anodized metal chassis with an external switching power supply. It has a diminutive red power indicator on the front, a simple power switch, a volume pot, and treble and bass tone controls. The rear of the unit is where the power supply plugs in, along with RCA inputs for your source and speaker level outputs to hook up passive speakers via speaker wire. It has five-way binding posts, but there's not a separate subwoofer out, which I would always like to see in an amplifier like this. So if you want to connect a separate subwoofer as well, you'll have to do so with speaker wire, if your subwoofer can accommodate this. Or you could always use a separate preamplifier with a subwoofer out. Fosse Audio claims that the TB10D has a maximum power output of 600 watts, but you'll need to upgrade the power supply to get that much out of it. Nevertheless. It is a rather powerful Class D amplifier for its small size, and I put it through its paces, running some pretty inefficient speakers off of it. In the course of my evaluation, I tested the TB10D with a number of speakers, including a set of Teal CS1.2s, which are 6 ohms and 87 dB, a set of Gershman Acoustic Studio 2s, which are also 6 ohms and 87 dB, a set of Cesaro Mini Wagners, with a Definitive Technology Supercube 2 subwoofer, of which the Cesaros are 4 ohms and 83 dB, and a set of Wolfman Lognes Sones, which are only 8 ohms and 94 dB. With the Teals, I used a Topping D30 as the DAC. With the Cesaros and the Studio 2s, I used a Conus Audio Digitale 2000, and with the Wolfs, I used a Gold Note 425 Valore Plus turntable and a Conus Audio 1000 level phono stage. And in all cases, the Fosse Audio TB10D performed rather well for its amplifier class and small price. As a solid state Class D amp, it's a bit bright leaning, lean in its character and perhaps somewhat deficient in the low end, but the inclusion of tone controls is a godsend. In almost all cases, I ended up turning the treble all the way down, but I almost always adjusted the bass. This smoothed out the presentation and made things less brittle, less dull, and less attacking to the ear. Even so, I was surprised by the decent, immersive, and somewhat holographic nature of the soundstage that this amplifier could throw. Separation was above average, and the space between notes was surprisingly good. Transients were a bit overly quick at times to resolve, but pianos and other instrumentation had a nice naturalistic attack. Listening on my Gershman Acoustic Studio 2s with the Conus Digitale as the source, my jaw dropped at what the TB10D was capable of on the track Zenarklin by Nobu Uematsu off the New World album. Even so, the Conus was doing a lot of the heavy lifting here, as the same track on the iFi i1 Nano as the source sounded thinner and more brittle. I normally find the i1 to be a stellar DAC for the price too, so it occurred to me that the TB10D needs a more musical source to provide the kind of complete sound that my ears crave. I also found this to be the case in my system with the TLCS 1.2 loudspeakers, as the musical nature of the Topping D30 was a nice match for the TB10D, and I was able to thoroughly rock out to the whole 72 Seasons album by Metallica. Which, by the way, this is their newest record, and with the bass tone control turned up a bit, there was sufficient amount of guttural force behind the guitars. But make no mistake, this is a Class D amp with a Class D sound. Depending on its surrounding system, it's both surprising at how well it performs and disappointing on occasion that it doesn't perform better without the right source chain and tone control adjustment at play. I watched another review of this thing prior to agreeing to accept the product for my own review, and that reviewer claimed that the TB10D replaced their AV receiver to power their favorite speakers. And while I understand how this could be possible, it's not something that I'm going to recommend to everyone. You see, while it does sound better than the majority of low-cost receivers, 
It's not going to best a well-implemented one, like my Onkyo TX RZ900, for example. I also wish that Fossi Audio would have chosen to include a separate subwoofer out on this amplifier, as its omission on the rear panel was disappointing to say the least. I'm never really a fan of using speaker level inputs at my desk with my DevTech subwoofer, as it's kind of a pain in the arse to hook up. With that said, the 10B10D definitely has the power advantage over something like the Q5 Pro from SMSL, even though that has a separate subwoofer out. Even so, at the time of this review, the 10B10D is only $80 with an additional $20 coupon available on Amazon. For that price, this thing is actually a steal, and will be a good stopgap in a primary system, or perhaps a permanent amplifier in a secondary system where critical listening is not the primary focus. Or perhaps when a small amplifier footprint is what is needed. Links to the TB10D, Conus Digitale DAC, and other products that were featured in this review will be listed in the description below. You'll also find other neighborhood access locations there, including Twitter, Instagram, www.intuitreviews.com, the channel's Patreon, and its Discord. I'd really appreciate it if you make sure that you've subscribed and liked this video before you head out, and if you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment, as I love to interact. And with that, I'm out for now.